Have you noticed how some top UFC competitors stick to their old habits, repeating them over and over despite the fact that they no longer work? This video is not about fighters' weaknesses or holes in their games, but rather a repetitive approach to some technique or strategy that fellow competitors have explored and are using against them. When a particular move or technique was used to edge opponents in the past but no longer works, one should change it and try to avoid it. However, that was not the case with the fighters on this list. Without further ado, we will look into elite fighters who simply refuse to stop their bad habits, which, in most cases, cause them to lose the fight. Dustin Poirier going for a guillotine Some would say that Poirier was the closest one could get to defeating Khabib when he pulled off that nasty guillotine on him. It seemed that the Russian would tap at any moment. However, being close does not count, and Poirier was subsequently subdued and strangled. After the clash, Khabib said that he watched every Poirier fight and noticed that the American tends to jump to a guillotine, which can end in him submitting the opponent or oftentimes losing a position. The Eagle capitalized on this bad habit, and it should have been a learning experience for Dustin, but no, he would simply not stop jumping for the guillotine. In his recent fight against the scary monster from France, Benoit Saint-Denis, Dustin jumped for the guillotine attempt multiple times, and none of those attempts were successful. He kept losing the position that Saint-Denis used to his advantage. Luckily for Dustin, he had the advantage in the artillery exchanges and knocked the adversary out on his feet. Just how many victories has Poirier won by way of guillotine? Zero! And he keeps going for the same bad habit over and over again. Imagine what Islam Makachev would do to him in their upcoming fight if he jumped for a guillotine and lost his position. Well, MMA is a crazy sport, and if Islam becomes the first victim of Dustin's guillotine, he probably would shut down everyone who refers to his favorite technique as ineffective. Ryan Hall Heel Hook Attempts They call him the wizard for a reason, as Ryan Hall would craft submission spells on you from every position. But there's one specific move in Hall's arsenal that he especially likes to use, the heel hook submission. You often see him executing the risky Imanari role to get to the desired heel hook submission, where he forces his opponents to tap out to spare them from potentially crippling injuries. The American really made a name for himself when he participated in the 22nd season of the Ultimate Fighter reality show, representing Team USA. Johnny Nunez and Franz Lioa had no clue how to defend against this notorious move and were quickly subdued in the first round. The Wizard also demonstrated the Imanari role against the UFC legend and Hall of Famer BJ Penn, who was a millisecond away from having his heel torn apart. However, when he faced the future UFC champion Ilya Topuria, the Gregorian fighter showed Ryan Hall why evolution is necessary in the fight game. Hall kept going for the heel hook, but Ilya stopped every attempt and repeatedly retaliated with punches. After a few unsuccessful attempts, the Wizard was brutally knocked out in the closing rounds of the first round and fought only once more in the next three years. Israel Adesanya – Keeping Opponents at Bay and Refusing to Engage the last style bender is like the Michael Jordan of striking. With 80 kickboxing bouts under his belt, the Nigerian was untouchable in the UFC, using his height and reach advantage to pick opponents apart with strikes from a distance. If opponents wanted to engage in striking exchanges, Adesanya would have scored some epic knockouts, like against Robert Whitaker or Derek Brunson. However, by playing it safe like this, scoring from the outside while avoiding putting himself at risk, often led to boring unanimous decision victories, as he did against Yoel Romero and Jared Cannonier. But winning boring decisions wasn't the only problem here. When you try to outscore the adversary and go to the judges' scores, sometimes it can be a risky move, as one strike or punch can change the whole outcome. Such was the case against his eternal enemy, Alex Pereira. The first time they met in MMA, the African fighter was scoring left and right, touching Pereira with kicks and punches, clearly having the advantage in the artillery exchanges. Instead of sealing the deal legally, Israel hoped to outscore the Brazilian fighter and win another unanimous decision. However, that quickly changed in the last round. After trying to land a calf kick, Alex checked it, which caused Israel to roll back and retreat. The Brazilian then unleashed a heavy cargo of bombs, brutally knocking Izzy out in the last round. Israel implemented the same strategy against Sean Strickland, but the American kept pressuring him and keeping him on his back foot. This constant retreat and trying to keep the opponent at bay exhausted Izzy as Strickland did not let him off the hook, which ultimately resulted in another loss. Adesanya has been out of action for over a year and a half, and if he makes his return soon, he should probably consider another strategy and approach. Paul Craig – Constantly Pulling Guard Let's get something straight. Paul Craig's guard has been quite of a snake pit for many. If he pulls you into his guard, you better plan an escape route, as he would most probably submit you from his back. This strategy proved to be effective, granting him huge victories over elite competitors like Magomed and Kalaev. 
Jamahal Hill, and Nikita Krylov. I mean, how many people can brag about beating both Ankalaev and Hill? No one except for Craig. However, this predictable strategy was quickly decoded, and a blueprint was also created. Avoid going to the ground and blast Craig with missiles on the feet. Vulcan Oesdemir knew that if he fell into Craig's guard, the Scottish fighter would probably pull off another triangle choke. So he stuffed all his takedown attempts and outclassed him on the feet to a unanimous decision victory. Trying to take the fight to his own realm at any cost gave Craig another loss, this time against Johnny Walker, followed by another defeat against Brandon Allen. Paul Craig is an average striker at best, so Kyle Bohario kept the fight standing and knocked the jiu-jitsu wizard out on his feet. When you fight at this level of competition, pulling guard and attempting submissions alone is never enough, and sooner or later, you would have to evolve and change your bad habits or you would get smoked. Marlon Vera – Passivity Chiquito Vera is like a king cobra. He has that killer instinct to end the fight at any moment, but the problem with that is he is always looking for that one big shot. The Ecuadorian fighter would stay passive for most of the fight, carefully choosing his strikes, refusing to get out of his shell. And then out of nowhere, he would send the opponent to another dimension. The front kick KO against the UFC legend Frankie Edgar was a thing of beauty, as well as many other finishes on Cheetah's resume. On the other hand, this strategy can often be ineffective, especially against volume strikers who are very active on their feet. When Cheeto fought Dominic Cruz, the Dominator was winning on the judges' scores, but then Vera used his nuclear option to send Cruz to another dimension. Well, that strategy proved to be ineffective against Corey Sanhagen, who outclassed the Ecuadorian throughout the whole fight. Instead of learning from his past mistakes, Cheeto Vera decided to keep the same approach against the current Bantamweight champ Sean O'Malley. The strategy was evident. Use his killer instinct and looking for that big moment to shut O'Malley's lights off instantly. Unfortunately for Vera, that moment never came. Cheeto's passivity played against him once again, as Sean O'Malley kept battering him with shots, giving the referees no headache about who was the main character that night. Cody Garbrand – Recklessness Going from one extreme to the other, if Cheeto's bad habit is his passivity, Cory Garbrand is quite the opposite. He would go berserk without a bulletproof vest and a helmet, trying to nonchalant. The American would not care to keep his guard up, and he would go after you until you are flattened out on the floor. This strategy proved effective against fighters like Thomas Almeida and Takeya Mizugaki, but at the same time, it was the reason for Cody being knocked out violently more than a few times. His former training partner, TJ Dillashaw, capitalized on Cody's bad habit and sent him to the Shadow Realm twice. Pedro Munoz kept the same tradition and issued Garbrandt a one-way ticket straight to the Dead Sea as well. This reckless approach had Cody knocked out so many times that he should probably change his nickname from No Love to No Guard. Valentina Shevchenko – Headlock Throw Have you seen a headlock throw in men's MMA? Me neither. This takedown is very common in women's MMA due to the body constitution. While men's body's muscular mass is mostly stationed at the neck and shoulders, women's body strength is around the hips. This allows them to use a headlock technique which can be effective but also a risky move to lose position. Valentina Shevchenko was the real black widow of the fight game. Her takedowns are so effective and her striking is as deadly as an AK-47 rifle shot. And of course, one of the most common ways to take opponents to the ground was the headlock throw. However, this move was studied and most women in her division learned how to defend against it. The bullet had unsuccessful headlock attempts against Amanda Nunez in a fight, which she ultimately lost in the end. Instead of avoiding this bad habit and technique that does not work anymore, Valentina kept at it and tried it against Talia Santos. The Brazilian used it against her and got a dominant position, capitalizing on Valentina's mistakes. The fight ended in a very close, controversial victory for the bullet, and she kept making the same mistake against Alex Grasso in a bout that cost her the UFC title. Although the headlock takedown worked in most cases, it's probably time to stop this bad habit to avoid having your back taken. Tyron Woodley – Backing up against the cage and looking for a big overhand Tyron Woodley had that nuclear option in his right hand. One shot was all it took to send his opponents to the land of darkness. Although he is an elite wrestler who could take the fight to the canvas at any point, the former champ used a somewhat lazy strategy throughout his career, which at moments was effective but later proved useless. He would back up against the cage and wait for the opponents to attack. He would then unleash the mother of all bombs to knock them out cold. He did that against Darren Till before submitting him on the ground, but this bad habit was quickly exposed by other elites. The American tried the same approach against Kamaru Usman, but the Nigerian nightmare showed him why evolution is crucial in the fight game. He dominated Woodley in the clinch and kept taking him down at will. Gilbert Burns followed the same blueprint as did Colby Covington. They all capitalized on Woodley's lazy approach, causing him to lose three fights in a row. But hey, 
Tyrone changed his bad habit in the fight against Vincente Luque, as he was the aggressor in that fight. Well, that bout didn't end well for him either. Woodley should have probably stayed retired and fully dedicated himself to rapping. Thank you for tuning in, fight fans, and we can't wait to see you in the next one.